news. God's not dead. Did you see that movie? Millions of people did and their lives were impacted because of that. Our guests today are Troy and Tracy Duhon. Troy is the executive producer of God's Not Dead, but that is just a small piece of the ministry he and his wife, Tracy, are involved in. We went to their businesses in New Orleans, Louisiana, and sat down with them and learned about so much that they're doing global ministry in so many ways. You don't want to miss a minute of this story, and you really don't want to miss how their pain became their life's purpose. Hello everybody and welcome back to Life on Purpose TV. Today we are coming from New Orleans, Louisiana at the corporate offices of Premier Automotive where we're sitting with some beautiful, wonderful old cars. And we're talking with Tracy and Troy Duhon about giving hope. Not just giving hope in New Orleans, which we have seen today they are doing in a huge, massive way. But they are giving hope in so many ways across the world. And we're going to get to talk to them about how it all started, how they can inspire you to give hope across the world, and the ways that uh, they are reaching so many problem areas in our society with the love of Christ. Christ. So you're in for a treat today. Here we are in New Orleans. We're so happy to have you both. Let's just jump right into something that is, is fun for, for both of us, Christian filming. I mean, we're doing this because we believe the way to change the world is one story at a time. Let's talk about how you started with God's Not Dead. When my daughter was 12 years old, she auditioned for a film and she got the role. So like a soccer mom or a traveling baseball dad, I had to go to L.A. So we went to L.A. because she was a minor, she couldn't be on the set, but I'm sitting on this movie set and I get a phone call from a spiritual big brother of mine named Dr. Rice Brooks. And he gets me on the phone and he says, Troy, do you realize that your kids, kids that grow up in your church, are going to go off to a liberal college and two out of three are going to walk away from their faith because they can't defend the gospel? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, there's no way the number's that high. And he goes, no, Troy, it's, it's 68%. I said, holy cow. And he goes, I'm going to write a book called God's Not Dead. The newsboys record the song, went to number one. And I'm going to bring apologetics from here down here. And I was like, wow. And then right there, I felt like the Holy Spirit hit me. And I'm like, me, God, do a movie? I ain't never did a movie in my life. And it was so real that it was like I couldn't shake it. So I'm on this movie set, it's lunchtime. I walk over to the owner of Pure Flix, Pastor Dave, he called him David White. I said, David, look, you don't know me. My 12 year old daughter's in the film. I want to do a film called God's Not Dead. I can deliver the band, I can deliver the author of the book, and I can fund it. And he looks at me like a little standoffish. He goes, Are you for real? I said, Yeah, I'm for real. And 31 days later, we signed a contract not knowing that over 40 million people Amazing. have seen the films. It's grossed over $100 million. And really, that's great. But what we get the most joy out of is when people come up to me and say, my 18-year-old kid saw that film before he went to college. And it saved him because he did go to a liberal college, Troy. And he was challenged on what he believed. So it's important for us to understand that movies like that can affect a culture that doesn't go to church no more. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was a privilege and an honor that God would have chosen us. And I'm very thankful that I stepped out the boat because yes, historically, exactly. when you think about doing something you've never done before, write a check for seven figures you never would have thought you'd wrote, it was for the right reason. So Tracy, your husband, he's a successful car dealer. He comes home, he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a movie. And fast forward to now, what, is, what do you think it says about the I say the misguided pulse of America because people were hungry for that message and I don't think anybody really expected that movie to to touch the heart so deep and as family people I mean what does it say to to us as a culture is what people really need for their heart as a wife and as a mother I mean first he's a dreamer he's a visionary God's given him that gift and so my my comment would always be is this a God idea or is this a Troy idea and so but because of us being um, out of anything in our relationship is praying together to know what is God and whatever is of God doesn't go away so we can it, it come you know that came about and and it was definitely different. It was different, but it also gave us an opportunity to say, okay, if it's much bigger than us, which it was so much greater than knowing God's in this and he'll work it out. Right after that film, 
we begin to ask God, you blessed us, now what do you want us to do? And that's kind of what birthed giving hope was, yes, God's not there with a great financial success. So we, our way of giving back is the orphanages we build, the people we feed, the rehabilitation centers we partner with, the community center we operate. A lot of that came from God's not dead. But it also inspired us to, to look for other injustices. My wife would always say, find the injustice that angers you or the passion that inspires you. That's what God's called you to do. So let's talk about um, 2004. I know a lot of times we as Christians, we really struggle with how to internalize pain and you lost a son. You both struggled in your relationship with God. Uh, your church prayed. You had all the right things in place to be able to receive what you believe would be the answer to your prayer. Uh, and you didn't get the answer that you prayed for. How did you wrestle with God and still come out stronger in your faith and as a couple? God is a good father and he can love us right where we are. He can father us right where we are. He can pastor us right where we are, even if we're running from him. And for a young girl who always ran to him and he was my foundation and I dared to believe everything in his word, even knowing three months into that first pregnancy that my son probably would not live and had enough faith to carry all of us. Truly did because I know God is good and is, He's faithful and His Word is true. You know, we had been through, which we each go through, is uh, answered prayers and prayers that aren't answered, you know, um, but, but nothing ever to that magnitude because in my life you could have anything in this world but my children and it was the very thing I walked through not once but twice and so then I had to come to the realization, honestly, the moment of, is God enough? And allow Him to love me back to life, which only a loving Father could do. We live in a broken, fallen world, was my resolve, both Troy and I, that bad things happen to good people. And I know there's a question in there. There's a question you can wrestle with. Well, if God is God, then why didn't He? At the time, I, w I love people and I love to touch the world. I didn't care to touch the world after that. It was like, you save them yourself, you care for people. The one thing I could not deny, neither of us, was that there was a peace and a presence that was in the midst of those situations that you can't deny. And that's what I would sit here and ask you or ask someone in front of me. Whatever happens in your life, whatever's happened, is there's a peace that when He is in your life and He's with you, you can't, you can't explain it. And you know that God is there and He begins it, and He did. He began a journey of healing my heart, restoring my heart that I could go back out and, and love people again. And Troy, you even said at one point in there, being the rebellious preacher's kid that you were, you looked back and thought, is it something I did? Am I yeah, being yeah. punished? And I think people get stuck on that if something goes wrong. Is this God punishing me? What have you learned with that question? You know, I always question that event because why us? Why twice? What, what, what sin am I paying for? And you know, because I was devastated. I mean, the second time I was like... Which was two years later, right? I, I, yes. I'm like... Six. And you know, and the good thing about having a church body that supports you, you have people that are encouraging, you have people that are praying for you, so you never really felt alone. When you go through a devastating event, you never want to go through it alone. And the good thing is our church never allowed us to feel that way. And then there was a peace. So yeah, there was pain, but then there was peace. And we had started the adoption process. I would have never had adopted. We have a beautiful Chinese daughter named Anna, and we would have never had adopted had that not happened. And now we have two beautiful girls because the doctor told Tracy not to do it again, not to try again. And I call her Mother Tracy. You don't tell Mother Tracy no. And we did, and uh, Ava came out perfect. But the thing that we do now, that pain obviously became our purpose. So one of the things the foundation does is we build orphanages around the world. We built orphanage in Hyderabad, India. We built an orphanage in Honduras, Gambia, Africa, Moscow, Russia. We're currently in construction in Lepo, Brazil. And if it wasn't for that pain, I don't think this purpose would have ever occurred. And I told Tracy, I said, you know, baby, I can't take away the pain, but I can make, I can make you this promise that before you die, they're going to call you the mother of many. Let's switch gears real quick to 2005 Hurricane Katrina. You flooded. You set up a relief center. 
and you said that in that transition, which is part of your overall story, that it went from how many cars you sold to how many people you could bless. Yeah. So how did that affect you both in such a way that you went from business to, oh my gosh, God put me here to help people? Well, think of it this way. The seat that you're sitting in, you'd be completely underwater for wow. Katrina. So everything we owned went underwater. So every car, we had 1,200 cars we lost. Two of our homes went underwater. And I remember my dad, I remember crying. I was a grown man, I was crying. And my dad looked at me and he said, son, that brick and mortar, that comes and goes. Those franchises you represent, they come and go also. You go back and take care of God's people and watch how he blesses you. My church and I partnered. We opened up the Relief Center. FEMA was not in the East. They were not in St. Bernard yet. We opened up a Relief Center and all of a sudden it was like opening the floodgate. We were running 1,200 cars a day. I remember walking up and watching this car line and I'm watching my employees who had lost everything they had. And they wouldn't pull in the sheetrock at their house. They were serving these people. And I could see joy. I could see smiles. I'm like, this is what it's about. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, I told my wife, I don't care for the rest of my career. I want to give back because that's what it's about. And that was kind of what birthed us taking Giving Hope to a whole new level. Running those cars, feeding those people. Now today we operate a Second Harvest's Food Pantry right here. They'll cook 1,100 hot meals today. They'll serve all the seniors that live in assisted living centers. They feed the kids after school. Uh, we give away close to 2.5 million pounds of food a year. We pick up at Winn-Dixie, Walmart, Rouse's, the second military commissary, and we recycle all the stamped out food. ESPN was here and they were filming a segment with Michael Thomas. And I had three ladies walk up to me. Three ladies were probably about 80 years old. And they said, Mr. Duhon, thank you so much because I don't know what I would eat if you didn't feed me. Wow. But when I hear that, it just strives and motivates me to want to do more. Now that you have a global perspective on Christianity, faith, families, pain, what do you say that is the common thread that, that could bring us all together? We're a divided nation. We're a divided world. We need to be together as a body of Christ. What's the simple things we can do to really create something that the, the world can see. The two, when you say simple things, would be prayer. Prayer. And would be love. No matter where we travel, mm -hmm. all over the countries, it is love will speak universally. Showing love will speak when you can't speak anyone's language. Some of the people we've connected with, you can't speak their language, but you see the love for the Lord and the love for people. And that's what you connect to. It's, it is a hurting world, and a lot of people carry a lot of pain. So until forgiveness occurs, nothing happens. So you have to learn to forgive. As a Christian, you've been forgiven, so why don't you give forgiveness? So you have to forgive, and when you do that, then miracles come. God shows up every time. What is next for your hope expansion and hope heroes? So we do a big event November 8th at the Hyatt Hotel. It's called the Giving Hope Gala. And there you get a chance to see the orphanages that we build. We do a ribbon cutting of our sixth orphanage, which will be in Lapo, Brazil. So it's a very poor part of Brazil. And we partner with a gentleman who supplies water to 61% of the country of Brazil. So anybody can come to the gala. And you know, a lot of people realize, or we try to tell people, when you go to a nonprofit event, it isn't always about money. Because you can be the hands and feet. Because we want you to bless people. And some of the greatest stories we have is people who volunteer here at the food pantry and they serve a 91-year-old World War II vet. Or they serve a mother of four who never, you know, hadn't seen her husband in years. I mean, there's so many great stories. So you don't have to just give money. You can, you can come into a Giving Hope volunteer day and that will blow, I mean, that has touched so many people. And there's organizations that come in. Yes. Yeah, organizations that come in um, and do a Hope Day. We have a Giving Hope Day mm -hmm. where like companies come in as a team and they prep the food, they cook the food, they uh, deliver the food, they serve the food, and then they eat with the seniors. And, it, and it's an incredible event. What would you say to someone at any age about feeling a sense of, if you don't feel a sense of purpose, how can you still muster up, put one foot 
in front of the other one day at a time and do that which leads to that sense of fulfillment. Everyone has a purpose yes. and you have to find out what is my purpose from the Creator because yes. that's why you're here. You were created to be here for a purpose. If you find out what that purpose is, that's where you find peace and you find prosperity. So you have to spend time with that Creator. You have to spend time with God to find out why am I here? What what am I supposed to do? Quit asking other people. Yes. What are watching social media and seeing that someone else is doing this? Maybe I should try that. It's really a one-way street. Yes. If you listen, and then he connects you to the body of people, the community mm -hmm. that helps you to get to that. Because as we connect one another, mm -hmm. you know, we can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And so as he joins us together, mm -hmm. then it helps each one to fulfill that purpose. It's hard to choose how to help Troy and Tracy because they're doing so many great things across the world. But we've made it easy. If you go to lifeonpurpose.tv, you can see ways to use their ministry to help others. Giving Hope NOLA is literally giving hope across the world.